Jesus. Bienvenido Espíritu Santo. Welcome Holy Spirit. Because it's all about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to talk to everybody today mainly about my trip to Honduras. This was my second trip. And uh, if anybody knows me, they know that, uh, you know, I've, my past has been, you know, littered with prison, jails, and, you know, doing a lot of time in crime and drugs and alcohol. And uh, so going on a mission trip was not something that I thought I would ever do. I didn't even know if, if I could even get a passport. I mean, I've always been on probation or parole, but uh, uh, I'm at Church Christ Fellowship, and Brian um, Norris is our team leader. He's an elder at Christ Fellowship. He was going to speak today, and I should have never told him that I would uh, back him up if he couldn't make it, <laughs> because he's a busy man, and he's got a lot on his plate, and uh, so he sends his love. Even though he hadn't said it yet, I know it's, he's wanting me to relay that. But uh, Brian Norris, as well as a lot of people at this church, Christ Fellowship is a great guy. And I remember him, I'm going past him in church, and he said, he said, Mark, I want you to go to Honduras. I said, you want me to go to Honduras? Uh, okay. I said, I, I'll think about it, you know. Uh, and uh, get back with you. So I'm thinking, no one really asked me too much to do anything, you know, uh, uh, because I let it be known my past, and some people might be a little leery of, I don't know, they have to get to know me first. But um, he ends up stopping me again. He says, this was a year ago, not this last trip. He said, uh, he said, we're going into a prison. And I said, I'm in. God knew you, all you got to do is mention jail or prison and I don't care what it costs where it's at, what time where when, I'm in and I've God knows my heart on this I've determined that I'm going to go into every prison and jail I can possibly get in and so you know as of now I've been into probably six prisons I'll be going to Mississippi with Pastor Todd in February to a Mississippi State Prison. Really looking forward to that. And so th this was my second time going to Honduras. And of course, we were, he said we're going back into prison this year. And uh, so I'm thinking, okay, you know, I'm in. And the first year I went, there was, you know, we had a feeding center and we were building a feeding center there. And I told, uh, uh, I didn't tell God. I just that, you know, what do you? I'm like a fish out of water here. I had never been uh, really married. I was married one time for six months to the bartender, and it didn't work out too good. Uh, but I didn't never have any kids. And so uh, me and kids, I'm always the guy where the kids, you tried to be friendly with them, and they'd kick me in the shin, you know what I mean? And so I didn't get along with kids. So I didn't really like kids. I didn't want kids. You handle the kids. I'll go to the jails and the prisons. But everybody knows God. He's going to start working on us all in all these different areas. And uh, so I get out there, and there's these kids. And we get off the bus at the feeding center, and the kids are jumping on everybody and everything. And I said, okay, Lord. I showed up, just like they say. All you got to do is show up. Next thing I know, one kid jumps on me, another kid jumps on me, and then I'm swinging them around. And... Uh, and so that broke the ice with the kids, you know. I uh, uh, ended up going into the prison, and then we, uh, it was a great trip. Uh, but I kind of almost, about the last day I was running out of gas, and I didn't know too much about keeping my spiritual tank filled. You know, the pastor told us, you know, you got your, your uh, emotional, relational, mental, physical, and spiritual tanks. You know, you got to keep them filled. And so this time... I was determined that all my tanks were going to be filled and I was going to let God do whatever he wanted, you know. This was going to be a, an awesome trip. And, um, and it really was. It was amazing. First place we went to was a school. 
And I said, okay, Holy Spirit. I said, you tell me. The kids were running around everywhere. I said, just let me lock eyes with, with a kid, uh, and I'll start there, you know. So this kid looks at me, and he's, he's got a California shirt on. It says California. And I said, oh, I'll be. And so I, I walked over to him, you know, and uh, I said, come on, uh, come on, Tayama. You know, I had a few little uh, phrases I could say. And uh, he told me his name. And uh, next thing I know, another kid come over, come on, Tayama, and then another kid come over. And of course, we all know it's the Holy Spirit, you know, and uh, answering my prayer. And so another kid shows up, and he can speak English. And the next thing I know, I'm telling these kids about my testimony, you know, and there was some bars on the school window, you know what I mean? And I was telling them how in California, that's where I got started in my crime spree, was California. I robbed a gas station with a, a machete. So that's how real smart I was. I mean, I, I, I went for the, you know, I didn't go for the banks and the vaults. I just went for uh, uh, the few dollars in the cash register, you know, I just needed to get high. And so I was telling the kids my testimony, and they just come and flock, and next thing you know, I don't even remember what I said, but they were all just laughing and cutting up, and I was uh, just having a good time with them, you know. And, uh, and so, you know, then we went into the prison, and the guys knew me and remembered me, and uh, one guy got out and came to the church service, you know, I mean, and, and we were at that church service, and the Holy Spirit just fell on us, and, and you know, Gavin, he's, you know, he's, he's a dancer anyway, but I'm not really... I used to be a dancer. I mean, uh, you know, I used to hit the discos when they let me out of prison. I would head straight for the discos. But uh, uh, we fell and we danced in that place that night like you wouldn't believe. It was just the most amazing night. And uh, we went in, uh, like I said, we went into the prison. And, <clears throat> and I love those guys. And, you know, uh, as much as God uses me in the prisons, I... Uh, I just, man, when I go into a jail or a prison, I, I'm just at home. You know, it's my home away from home. And I love, I, I just love all the guys in there. I could care less what they did. It doesn't matter. And uh, I just want to tell them the truth because, you know, that's what what set me free, you know, was, was the Son, Jesus Christ. I mean, once uh, the Holy Spirit fell on me in that jail cell, and I remember apologizing to a prison guard, and that's when the heavens opened up and my whole life changed. Everything changed. And then I started wrapping the Word of God around my heart and declaring the Word. And I was, I, I would have actually maxed out in two more years. I still, I would have, you know, I've been out of prison for 20 years now. But that's how much time I had and how much I was going to do. And God intervened. And uh, so instead of being in there, God, God, uh, directed my steps, you know, everywhere I've been since I got out, and uh, I know who saved me. I I have no other uh, anything else to do, uh, but proclaim His goodness. And so, you know, um, um, we went into a hospital out there, and and the whole time I'm out there, the roads are just rough, you know. And I said, I said. Man, I can't believe these people aren't wrecking, you know, because there's no, there's no uh, signals, there's no lines, everybody's just honking and wide open, you know. And I, I said, that, I'm surprised there's not motorcycle wrecks. So we went into the hospital, and Pastor Marty and myself and another guy named Nico went into this one unit, and I looked down through there almost as far as you could see. We started with one motorcycle wreck, motorcycle wreck, motorcycle wreck, motorcycle. I mean, they were wrecking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just didn't see it. But uh, God performed His signs and miracles. You know, uh, you know, people were healed, set free, delivered, salvations. Uh, and you know, I was thinking this morning. I, I went to my my dentist this morning to get my teeth cleaned 
she had done it one other time, and she said to me, she said, do you have a family member named Rick? I said, yes, ma'am. I got a, a younger brother named Rick. Yeah, I went to, in Doraville. I said, grew up in Doraville. I said, yeah, that's my little brother, you know, and he was my, underneath me. And Rick knew me better than anybody. And she said, I used to come over to your house and jump on the trampoline. <laughs> and I said, yeah, uh, that was my trampoline, I, you know, because I was the trampoline guy. And so she, she said, and you, you're uh, Mark? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and so she knew everything about my past. And I mean, you know how you ever think about the look that everybody had on Lazarus? When he come out of that grave, <laughs> everybody expected me to be dead. And that lady said, "She said, so you, you make, you, you okay? You make, you making it?" <laughs> I said, <laughs> "Take a look. I mean, you know, God can clean you up, yeah. buddy. Yeah. I don't care what you've done. <clears throat> I just tell them in, in them jails, really, you just surrender your life and watch God do it. Yeah, Forget yeah. about the time." You, you know, because I, I didn't know it. I still had, even when I had surrendered, I still had to do three more years, and I could have done 20, 25 more. Uh, but that's how good God is. He doesn't yes, he care. Is. And he, he just wants us to surrender to him. And like, like Bob and Jeff and Tom, uh, you know, and, and everybody, you know, we just all just trying to please God. You know, we have our faith. We're pleasing God the best way we can. But I was thinking of of uh, Mark 16, and I had always looked at Mark 16, you know, because it says, uh, and these signs shall follow them that believe, that in my name we shall cast out demons, we shall speak with new tongues, take up serpents, and if we drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them, and we shall lay hands on the sick, and they will yes. recover. Yeah. So I'm I, I know God's good, empowered us, and he gave us the power and everything. But, you know, sometimes we, we might lack, lack confidence or whatever. And God was showing me this morning that uh, drop back a little bit, a couple of verses, and it was in 14. And you remember when uh, the 11, it was, you know, uh, Judas had already killed himself. So the 11 were sitting there eating just like we're eating right now. And uh, Jesus shows up. And uh, what does he do right off the bat? He rebukes them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. But what happens in the next verse? He said, go therefore and preach unto all the nations, you know, and tell them about me and everything. You know, God, he doesn't even care. He's like, it doesn't matter where you're at today. It doesn't matter what you've done, not done. It doesn't matter. You can start right now, today, and just go. You know, everybody's got something. I went out to Bob's Godmobile before I took off for Honduras, and I was going over a lot of stuff, and I, I really wanted to serve more, but I was so focused on this trip, I was giving everything I had into it, fasting and praying, because, you know, we all want to be used by God, you know? And so uh, I did, and it's, it's a wonderful thing, and I love the kids uh, now. Uh, God is uh, using me mightily with these kids as far as uh, I'm not opening a daycare, though, or nothing. <laughs> uh, so no, don't nobody get no ideas. I'm still going into the jails and the prisons. But Brian Norris, we were in the baptismal pool before we left on the trip, and he said, Mark, the Holy Spirit. He said, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you. He's got more for you than just the jails and the prisons. We limit ourselves. I don't think I'm good. I'm only good for the jails and the prisons. That was my thinking. I loved them. I thought, I'm happy. I'll just do jails and prisons. I'll let everybody else handle all this other stuff. Just let me in there. But you know, God's got... So much for all of us. I mean, so we don't more. even have a clue. Just what, and, and I mean, we're just all really just now tapping into it mm -hmm. to see what God's got for us. And you do have to show up. You know, there are there are actions to our faith, and and that 
And that was what started the whole thing. I got saved that night on that jail cell floor. I went into a, a, a Bible study and got saved. Now, I was saved, but my faith wasn't activated until I repented and went to that guard. I had cussed him out. As soon as I shut, said I was sorry at 42 years old, the first time I ever told anybody I was sorry, that's all God needed. Now I can do something. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so I encourage anybody and everybody, no matter, like you said, you know, Bob was talking about, you know, you don't really think you, you can do this or that or... You're not qualified. Well, God's the one that qualifies, qualifies us. That's it's right. not us. Amen. And He doesn't care. I'm living proof that He doesn't care what you've done. That's right. You know, I didn't do a, anything good for 42 years. I mean, I might have dusted some furniture for my mom <laughs> right before I got molested. But after that, everything went downhill. And so Satan's always out there seeking whom he may devour and get us off, and that's what he did with me. And he made me feel like I wasn't worth of nothing. But you know, God is just wanting a, a, a repentant heart. He'll do the rest. He just wants you to acknowledge him in all your ways. He'll direct your steps, and he's been directing my steps. And I, I, don't, I don't worry about nothing anymore. I could care less. My life is not my own because he bought me with a price. And therefore, I'm going to glorify God in my body and in my spirit, which are God's. It's all his. Everything's his anyway. It's all his. And for me to live as Christ and to die as gain, that's my motto. And I'm not, uh, I don't care about living and dying. I'm going to go to Honduras. I'm going to go to anywhere else I can go. As long as my wife supports me, and she does, God bless her. You know, she couldn't make it today, but I got a, a great wife who supports me. She's been taking care of her dad. And so she letting me go and do into the prisons and the jails. And I went into Forsyth Jail Sunday night, and there was a guy going, you were just in Lumpkin County, and he done got arrested over here in Forsyth. <laughs> and he, I said, that's right, and I'm getting ready to... Uh, chasing you severely but I ain't going to give you over to death because that's what God told me he will whoop you upside one down the other only because he loves us he's just trying to get you to do the right 